Hey guys! Hi! Welcome back to another episode. I'm Sarah. And I'm Evelyn. And we are... Rise! Rise! Hey! Hi! <laughs> so today... On today's episode, what we're going to be talking about is the father wound. Daddy issues yep. for days. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so, How to heal the father wound. This is a huge one. Yes, and I actually, um, for me, I found that this one ran a lot deeper than my mother wound. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, I feel like the father wound kind of defines... <laughs> your dad kind of defines... Especially for women. Mm-hmm. He kind of defines your entire relationship... With men. With men, with self-love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With... Yeah, with men, with, with, with your relationships in general. Mm-hmm. It's a huge, huge issue that runs so deep. I yeah. mean, the mother they, wounds... Yeah, they like basically write the standard of what all your male relationships will be mm-hmm. like. Mm-hmm. And also, I think, um, I mean, we'll get more into this, but I think it also has a big impact on how you live your life, on if you're present for yourself, mm-hmm. right? So, and how how quickly are you to jump on your goals, to pursue your goals, to do stuff <clears throat> yeah. for you? Oh, There's yeah. There's so much that goes into the, the daddy issues, the father wounds. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, so, we'll dive right into it. I guess, like, the first thing we'll talk about is what are characteristics yeah. of the daddy wound. Daddy wound? So, what, you, what is it? Do you have it? Do you have it, yeah. So, one of the major things is looking for love outside of yourself. Mm-hmm. Are you chasing love? Are you yeah. lowering your standards to receive love? Are, yeah. like, what, to what lengths are you going mm-hmm. to get love because you're not yeah exactly so i think with the the big difference between like <clears throat> the feminine and masculine like the father wounds um it'd be like the father so the feminine is kind of like the love energy mm-hmm. right she fills the whereas the masculine is container mm-hmm. right it's the container that holds the love and the feminine fills it mm-hmm. so when you have daddy issues or father wounds you're just kind of all over the place mm-hmm. i think it's like yeah there's no ch- structure there's no structure you're, you are chasing love because you feel like it's always like getting away from you mm-hmm. rather than being able to keep it within right yourself yeah so kind of like going on that idea with the vessel if your vessel is broken which is mm-hmm. your masculine energy within you your love is always seeping out yeah it's like leaks in the right, vessel right yeah. <laughs> so if you don't heal that vessel yeah your love leaking it, you're leaking all your love is basically you're leaking what's life force right yeah <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And then another big one that I experienced was um, having to prove mm. that I was worthy enough for love. For sure. That's a yeah. huge one because like, I mean, how many of you, I think this is really evident and especially in homes where maybe like you were always pushed to be the best. Like you always had to get A's in school mm-hmm. and you always had to be the best on like a, a sports team like mm-hmm. like things like that you're a good always career good like career you're always awards, pursuing like pursuing awards and trying yeah. to be seen basically yeah you're always right. pursuing the next thing yes right and like doesn't matter how big your savings are it doesn't matter how many properties you own you're never going to really feel like you're enough if you have that masculine mm-hmm. wound mm-hmm. where yeah you're just so it's like the the obsession with pursuing and building mm-hmm. right because i think the masculine naturally is a builder yeah but when there's a masculine <laughs> wound, they overbuild yeah. or they don't build enough and they do nothing. Right. Yeah. Right? It's like the opposite sides of the spectrum yeah. there. You're one or the other. Yeah. And like, I also too noticed too with uh, like having the father wounds, it mm-hmm. just, it's manifests in a way that you are so, um, like you are driven to getting these accolades and like the, yeah. like these outward yeah. um, these things approvals, that like approvals from other people. It's yeah. like... That is holds more weight than the person you are, than the being respectful, being loving, being vulnerable, being courageous. Like you, you pursue things that don't actually matter. If you notice, it's right? Like, it's like you always have a to do list of things you want to achieve, but it just doesn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> or like it happens, but it doesn't do anything for you on the inside. Yeah. 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 It just fulfills that. Some big yeah, man, daddy issues. issues. Yes. <laughs> Rick. And then, well, like, another big one that was also for me yeah. is loving and respecting men mm. just because they held a title in my life. And but what I mean by that is that people, I let men <clears throat> treat me like shit just because right. they were a boyfriend, just because they're or dad somebody, or, or yeah. my dad, or a family member, you know? Like, you always say, oh, but, you know, like... 
um, but they're my dad or like, you know, it's my brother. Like it, it, you always have these excuses as to why people treat you badly mm-hmm. just because of the title that they hold within your life. And to be honest with you, toxic is toxic, regardless oh, yeah. of what title they hold. Mm-hmm. And like, it's like, it, you and know, accepting that behavior, like you think you have to right. almost save them. Yeah. By accepting it, right? Like, no, oh, they're... Uh, protecting them. Like, protecting, you protect right. their integrity or how they're seen um, in front of other, other people yeah. because you want to protect them, because you want to keep them safe. You want to keep their their mask, like, mm-hmm. who they portray themselves to be. The masculine mask, right? Like, yeah. There's so many masks that the masculine wears, mm-hmm. too. Yeah. Right? Like, what, what were the masks? There's, like, a book you read on Oh, it. yeah. Oh, God, there's so many. I don't even remember. I read that book a long time ago. <sighs> Uh, we have to talk. I think we have to do a review. Well, on we that have book. to do a review. But there's like yeah. five different masks that the masculine wears, right? There's there's like the hero. Yeah. There's, there's like, like the athlete. Athlete. There's yeah. Like different. The but like helping yeah. them protect, use that mask. So we we assume that they're soft on the inside, but like rather than expecting them to step yeah. up to their. Well, that's another thing, right? It's potential. like holding them accountable for their actions. It's mm-hmm. like you, you don't. You try to protect them and try to. I think on. I think and then. There's that, like either trying to protect them or the opposite side of it could be like a straight up fear of the masculine too. Mm-hmm. Like I know for me, like for a long time, <laughs> I wouldn't say no to like anyone, like whether it was my dad, brother, whatever, like I wouldn't say no because there's that fear mm-hmm. of like assuming that everyone is like, a, every man is a wounded masculine, mm. right? So it was mm-hmm. like a fear of like, if I say no, am I going <clears> to... <throat> I don't know, be slapped. I don't or know. Or like hurt their feelings. Hurt well, their like feelings, for me, it was or, like, or for me, they'll leave. Like, yeah. For me, it yeah. was always like, I, even like turning people down, I was just like, oh, but I don't want to hurt their feelings. And I'm just, okay, you know, maybe I'll give it a chance. Yeah. Maybe I'll give them a, you know, it's like, fuck, like, I'll save their just feelings. say no. <laughs> it's like deep down inside, you know, you want to say no, but you're Self like, sacrifice. Yeah, you do. Mm-hmm. You know? And another one, another characteristic is. Trying to be perfect. Oh my goodness. For love. That kind of goes back to there's perfect in like life and accomplishments, like pursuing that, and there's also perfect in love. Mm-hmm. Like and and like even like just being wanting to be everything for another person. Right. You know, wanting to be their best friend, wanting to be like being there for them whenever they need you, even if it goes against what you need for yourself. It's also changing yourself for the other person. Mm hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, for a wounded mask, like, I used to change myself when I was younger. I would, like, change, like, whatever they wanted, whatever... They were interested in. Or whatever, whatever they're interested, interested in, I'll pretend I'm into that. Yeah. Right? Oh, God, I did that, oh too. Oh, my God. <laughs> Which is also, I mean, it's wounded feminine, but it's also wounded masculine within, because we all hold both energies. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. But it's that fear, right, of not being loved for who you are. Right. Like, they're you gonna know, leave. And that's the thing, like, the wounded masculine... If, if you are embodying a wounded masculine, like, you're going to run mm-hmm. when things get tough. Mm-hmm. You're not going to be able to commit. Nope. Right? So, like, and I think maybe part of us know that, that we see that wounded masculine in the other. Mm-hmm. So, we try to avoid it. Right. right? We tiptoe around it. Mm-hmm. So, another thing to kind of, like, look at is what was your relationship with your father like Mm -hmm. what are the characteristics in your father that you have noticed now that you're an adult that you're like okay you know what maybe they weren't so healthy you know like the patterns yeah like did your was your father a liar was did he have addictions was he disrespectful was he violent was he manipulative yeah um or it could also be vice versa too like sometimes it's not even like um your father holding these traits maybe it was you in that maybe were you always playing the victim to get your father Mm. to do things were you um manipulative to get your father to do things or to get men in your life to do things you know like it i I don't relate it goes so so deep you can either embody it or Or, you're dating it yeah yeah or it it goes one of those two ways like now we're gonna go into how to heal this relationship So, like I mentioned, the first thing you're going to do is analyze your relationship with your father. Mm -hmm. How was your relationship with your father? Was it a healthy one? Was it an unhealthy one? What was the dynamic between you two? Now, also look at your relationships, your current relationships with men in your life. How are they similar to your father relationships? Yeah. So, if your dad was always (laughs) yelling, for example, Mm -hmm. are you dating someone who's always yelling or are you always yelling? Mm -hmm. If your dad maybe never knew how to communicate right or was absent yeah 
right? Like, are you absent in relationships? Do you have a hard time committing? Or are you dating someone who is like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So that's a... Uh, Such that's, a that's big a, one. Yeah, that's a big, like, your first Huge step issue. to do that. Yeah. So, I mean, should we give some personal insight or... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess we should. So, okay, I'll go first. Okay. (laughs) So, my dad, I mean, I kind of mentioned before in other videos that, like, I was in foster homes, and and before that, like, my dad was a little, well, very abusive, Mm -hmm. and um, in that, like, I... I didn't see the pattern at first because I always disconnected from that. I was like, okay, I disconnected from this man for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, now I am in communication with him. But after disconnecting, you think, okay, the problem is solved. He's out. Mm-hmm. But when you look at relationships, I found that I was consistently dating the same person, which is someone who was like, had a temper, was abusive maybe in different ways or not. Mm-hmm. Um, was always coming and going, Mm -hmm. right? My dad was very much like in and out or he would say he's leaving and then come back a few days later. And, um, I found that my relationships, my relationships with men were like that too, Mm -hmm. right? Where like they would pretend or not pretend they, I'm sure they had good intentions, but they would come in like love bomb (laughs) basically and then leave like a week later. Yeah. And I think that's consistent pattern that, um, for me, I've had to break and be like, you know what, that is karma that I'm no longer going to accept. Mm -hmm. That's a pattern that I don't resonate with anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I am a full divine being of light Mm -hmm. and and God, pure love energy. And that's just not acceptable to me anymore. Right. Right? And I think that's when I made that decision of like, this is a Mm non-negotiable. I'm not going (laughs) to accept this anymore. That's when life really started to change. Because all of a sudden, you're not worried if the other person is going to leave or not. Right. Because you're going to trust your instinct. Like, you're going to see that red flag ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Where, like, whether they're abusive, temper, whatever. Yeah. Rather than being, rather than, oh, this is the other thing. Rather than, for example, let's say I saw that a guy was temperamental mm-hmm. in my younger years. Um, I... Your first instinct, if you have this father wound, is you're going to find that attractive. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, they say too, right? You always end up dating people that are, that are like, like your father. Yeah. Right? Or, <laughs> or like your mother. Or you're going to embody it yeah. if you're the masculine. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd be attracted to that. And, and what that really is, is it's noticing, it's seeing that it feels like home. That attachment right? to chaos. Like, yeah. Attachment to chaos. Yes. And it feels like it's something you already know. It's something that's consistent that like re- triggers something in your brain and goes, oh, this kind of feels familiar to mm-hmm. me. So you get attached to it thinking yeah. that it's chemistry. Yeah. And what that really is, is a trauma bond Yeah. at its core, right? A trauma bond yeah. to like, let's say a temperamental person, mm-hmm. right? And then letting go of that attachment to someone like that and realizing that that is actually a red flag. That mm-hmm. is not chemistry, mm-hmm. right? And trusting your intuition. Once that's healed, once that wounding is healed, you're no longer going to be attached to that right? or attracted to it. Yeah. You're not going to want to embody it because you're going to realize, you know what, this is either, if you're embodying it, this is my, this is just a trauma mm-hmm. that I'm embodying. It's stuck in my body. It's trying to come out in some way. Right. Um, or you're going to say, you know what, I see, I recognize this in the other person. And I don't judge you for it because we're all, Mm -hmm. we're all on our own path and figuring things out. We're all trying to heal. Yeah. (laughs) So I don't judge the other person, but recognizing like that is not acceptable in my life, in my relationships, Mm -hmm. in something so divine as a relationship with self. Yeah. Right. And that's true. And the other. So, I mean, that's, that's a, a little bit realization of, right there. It's huge. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh like, my God. Realizing the red flag, like things that you thought were chemistry, things that you yeah. thought were like this other person's like, oh. Yeah, but you know what? It's also like, <laughs> it's also, yeah, it is a trauma bond, but yeah. for the longest time, that was your normal. Mm-hmm. That was what you knew as what love was yeah. or, you know, and especially too growing up, like that's your father. Like, I, you love your right. father. Like, this is... You think they, that's a divine masculine. You think that, well, yeah, that's the epitome of right. a man, you mm-hmm. know? And that's what you base your standard of what a man in your life is. Mm-hmm. Right. That's what you consider acceptable. Right. Right? right. And you were pretty much um, pushed, pushed to accept it as a child because mm-hmm. you either accept it or... Like, you, you sink or you float, right? Yeah. Sink or swim. Yeah. So you, you accepted that as... The normal. But you know, another thing too that I've kind of realized with my, like, for example, like my relationship with my father, like mm-hmm. my, my dad was never the most affectionate person. 
Um, the only time I ever really received affection was when I was doing well in school or like, you know, I had my mm. career set or, you know, chasing yeah. goals and that sort of thing. And, um, but like for me, like what my dad taught me too, he was a go getter. He was like, you know, you yeah. work hard for what you want, like no excuses, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and in itself that was great. And you, you start to kind of appreciate the good qualities and almost like ignore the bad qualities right and I feel like that's what I did a lot in my relationships that I'm like oh but you know what like he's like we have similar you know like we're both go-getters but yeah, hard worker but yeah he treats me like yeah. shit but that's okay because you know we have well, other men yeah that's all men <laughs> right yeah, yeah yeah so like for me it was like realizing that you know it's not like mm-hmm. it's not enough to just be a go-getter it's like if you're not treating me with respect either and like I'm always trying to protect you to make you look like a good person yeah. and you're not like, I, I need to, there's something that needs to change here. Yeah. You know? That's almost like, right in, right there in itself is a wounded masculine, right? The, the workaholic. Mm-hmm. Right? Because yeah. we, I think in our, in our society too, we just accept, like, the harder you work, the, the more respect you're going to get. Like, that's, yeah. that's something we respect in our society. But what it is at its core is an addiction. Yeah. To something outside of self. Yes. Searching for love, for validation but you look for self. that but you look for that because i embodied that so hard in my life for like sure. that hard worker work until mm-hmm. like you can't no more until your body's like you know like crawling like that <laughs> you're like, in bed like, <laughs> like you're like in bed <laughs> shaking you're like fuck like one more email i can send one more email oh but God. no like I, that's that was me i was such a uh, and it was i guess it was like looking for fulfillment in other mm-hmm. ways because like for me too it's like i guess like I know I couldn't always rely on another person, but I always knew I could rely on myself and my career was never going to cheat on me. (laughs) You know, like my career was never going to lie to me. My career was never going to let me down. You know what I mean? That's very true. I think it's also for you too, though. It was, it, like, I think because your parents were new Canadians Mm -hmm. and people, when they come to Canada, it's like all about opportunity and like you work to the bone. Yeah. You know, you can say immigrant. (laughs) I don't, I'm not allowed to say that. You can say it. <laughs> New Canadian. <laughs> so these New Canadians work themselves to the bone. And I understand it just because, like, of course you're here to work. Like, it is about opportunity. But at mm-hmm. the same time, you're not in a country where you have to to work yourself to the, like, you're safe now, Mm -hmm. right? Like, that's why you come here, too, is for a good life. (laughs) Yeah, no, it's true. So I think, like, right in there, it goes back to the workaholic Mm -hmm. issue, and it's, like, escaping, and I think especially people who were outside of Canada or outside of the U.S. living in countries that were not, that were volatile, Mm -hmm. right? Like, you want to escape your reality, too. Right. So you work, you have addictions of some sort. (laughs) But, like, you know, and also, too, like, I, again, like, I don't feel like working is a bad thing it's no. just the but it's excess- a masculine it's the act- excessive yes working yes the not knowing when to stop and chasing this illusion mm-hmm. that the more you work the happier you're gonna be yeah because you have to have a balance right? right we all have the feminine masculine and if you don't if you're imbalanced and you have too much masculine mm-hmm. you're a workaholic mm-hmm. like if you're literally not sleeping because you have to get up early for work like you're not getting any sleep right you're not eating properly. No. You're not meditating or, or working out or like spending time with your friends. And like spending time with yourself and like re like re yeah. energizing. It's an imbalance. And, you know, straight yeah. up. Yeah. You're not it's not self love. It's not you're no. not loving yourself. You're not respecting yourself. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, and yeah, there definitely has to be that balance. Yeah. So how did you heal your father wounds? And I think we're still healing them. Yeah. I, I mean, like, this is like a constant, you know, you're oh constantly, gosh, a constant end. cycle. You're revisiting this all the time. And again, it's always, you're going deeper and deeper mm-hmm. and deeper. So again, like, it, it, it's really similar to what we discussed in the um, wounded, like the mother wounds. Mm-hmm. So the first thing I did was, um, <clears throat> again, looking up what the difference is between a divine masculine and a wounded masculine Mm -hmm. okay so for um for like a divine masculine for example they're present Present. they are always in the moment so if you're doing something be all in Mm -hmm. in that moment if you're reading a book engulf yourself in reading a book if you're working engulf yourself in 
your job and enjoying it and loving what you do. Yeah. Are you lost? Are you cerebral? Are yeah. you lost in your mind? Right. Or are you here now? Are you right? Yeah. Right. Because yes. lost in your thoughts, that's not that's too much masculine there too. Right. Right. If you're up in your head, you're not going to be feeling what's in your body. You're not going to have your connection to God, to source, love, to your heart, to your heart. Mm-hmm. Right. Like. You're not going to have connection to your body and to know what you need if you're tired. If, right. Like your body is your compass mm-hmm. to happiness. Right. And that's what people don't realize. Right. Exactly. People have become so numb to mm-hmm. listening to their body and feeling their body thinking that it's going to steer them wrong. It's like no one knows what it needs like more than your body. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, another good one for divine masculine is boundaries. And... By boundaries it doesn't it doesn't necessarily mean just boundaries with other people it's boundaries with yourself right like when to tell yourself okay i'm gonna stop yeah okay i've worked enough i have to stop and i have to give myself time yeah and like boundaries with with people too though with people it's right a big one especially with the feminine i think we need boundaries with other people right like mm-hmm. saying no mm-hmm. for women mm-hmm. <laughs> saying no is a huge and putting issue. yourself first, right? And it's not being selfish. Mm-hmm. Saying no and putting yourself first. And having a list of like what you expect in a relationship mm-hmm. and what is a, like a, a red oh, flag, yeah, red flag, non-negotiable, oh. you're out, right? Like, uh, having that boundary. Because yeah. I think that's a big thing. Like we accept certain things from people just because we love them. Mm-hmm. Whether that's like they're not replying to your messages or they're not calling you or they're not being, they go a long time without calling you or they're, not or, <laughs> or they're not making the time for you right you know what i mean and um so that's another one just knowing your boundaries mm-hmm. um honoring your no and forgiving your father we to, that's well that, that's it. yeah that's like we'll, we'll talk more into how okay we sorry go jumping about, the gun yeah she's jumping the gun a little bit um, another one that we mentioned too is being connected to your feminine. Mm-hmm. So being connected to your heart, being connected to your emotions and not being scared to be vulnerable and speaking your truth. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we find that in today's society, to, to, in today's society that men have issues being vulnerable, yeah. uh, talking about their feelings, talking about what they're going through, you know, they're and, disconnected from their heart mm-hmm. because right. too, right? Like we, we're raised in, in this society too, where, uh, you hide your emotion you do not show because that is weakness you know and we have to remember too for like hundreds if not thousands of years men were expected to go to war Mm -hmm. and be these warriors that were like heartless basically because you couldn't have emotion out on the battlefield Mm -hmm. and like that was their job they were just the protectors right to the extreme right though right they weren't protecting from love they were protecting it from duty Mm -hmm. i guess and i think from there like it just it became so diluted with like, is that even a word? Dilute? Yeah. I don't know, but like it just became so like mucky right? with this idea of like what is masculine. And we're now, we're at this place where masculine is considered like heartless and just like disconnected from emotion in mm-hmm. general. And that's not okay. No, it's not. Right? Like and that. Wants, I, I think like deep down, I don't think anybody, and I don't even think that they're happy with. No. How can you be happy that? if you don't have love? Yeah. Or that love. you can talk about your feelings. You know, it's like life isn't perfect mm-hmm. and everybody goes through their struggles. And mm-hmm. the fact that you can't feel safe enough yeah. to be able to talk about your struggles. Like like you think you have to keep it inside. inside. Yeah. And just deal with it like a right. man. or Yeah. <laughs> deal with it yourself. Yeah, exactly. So. <sighs> Poor guys. Mm-hmm. But I think women too. Like we, the result of that is women... They either become too emotional, so women will embody the extreme. And but, make, well, being overly emotional, that's like wounded feminine. It is, but it's also as a result of wounded masculine, mm-hmm. if you're disconnected right. from that balance. Mm-hmm. Another good one is, for divine masculine, is they know where they're going. So they know mm. what they want. Ooh, so sexy. Right? <laughs> and, and that kind of like, and that also is expressive, or it, it shows in the way that they make decisions. Mm-hmm. They know where they're going and all their decisions yeah. are based on their end goal but they oh, this is the thing they lead they let the heart lead them right there. it's well, not that's just the about thing, chasing right? the money well that's the thing right <laughs> like they have to be connected to their heart yeah because again like we have Purpose. like we have said that everybody embodies both energies mm-hmm. and the fact that you as a masculine being connected to your heart space and letting that guide you yeah and having courage to follow your heart you know 
Like, I think it, it, you have to have purpose, mm-hmm. right? You have to love what you do. Otherwise, you're just chasing something that will mean nothing when you leave this earth. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, the divine masculine, that's the perfect, that's the divine masculine when you have the balance with the heart because then you can follow that intuition because men have intuition too. Right. I know women, we like to make you think that you don't, but you mm-hmm. do. <laughs> and you can follow your intuition to your yeah. your life purpose, right? It's not just about working hard and like building mm-hmm. real estate, building whatever it is mm-hmm. you're building, right? Unless like that's where your heart is. Unless that's where your heart, heart is. is, right? Like but. it's just as long as you're doing things from a place of love and mm-hmm. a place that brings you joy too. Like example too, like if you want to be a freaking accountant and that numbers brings you joy and you love and you get lost in it, like mm-hmm. freaking go for it. Yeah. You know, but don't do things just because you're chasing money or because you're chasing security or because, yeah. you know. And I think that comes... It's like what your intention. What is your intention behind what you're life. chasing? What, what is your what mission in life? Is, yeah. What is your mission? Yeah. Right? I truly believe that we are all here to... Well, we've already said this. Like, embody God, love, source. Mm-hmm. Embody him or her. Mm-hmm. And therefore, you have a mission on in this lifetime... Mm -hmm. And we all have these different gifts, right? Like right now we're living out our mission here talking to you. We're talking about our gifts. Like we're turning our pain into gold, Mm -hmm. right? And I think we all have this ability. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what is your mission? Like what, what is your passion? What drives you? That is like a true divine masculine trait. Mm -hmm. And that also connects to commitment. Right. That's another one. It's even like commitment to other people. Commitment to yourself is number Mm -hmm. one. It's like how committed are you to yourself to creating a space where you feel safe yeah. where you feel honored where you feel valued you know who are you surrounding yourself with yeah you know who's in your circle commit to your growth mm-hmm. commit to what lights you up commit to love mm-hmm. like and again like it's not about committing to something outside of yourself yeah it's committing to love within and therefore it will be reflected outside right yeah. absolutely okay so On the next (sighs) step, next step to to healing healing is writing down your stories. Mm -hmm. So, with your by that we mean that you are going to go through in your childhood. You've experienced moments that I'm sure are very vivid in your life now, or like that you still remember Mm -hmm. where you got hurt, where you felt betrayed, where you felt unheard, ignored, misunderstood. Write those stories down. Yeah, and what you're now what you're going to do with those stories is you're going to do two things the first thing is you're going to be you're you're going to substitute yourself in that story and put your father in that story Mm -hmm. and what that's going to do it's going to do three things the first thing is going to offer you give you sympathy allow you to feel sympathy for the other person Mm -hmm. it's going to offer you understanding for the other person and you'll be able to understand that the only reason why your dad treated you this way was probably because he got treated this way as a child, Mm -hmm. you know, and giving you this understanding is going to help you with the biggest thing, which is forgiveness and being able to forgive your father for having been put in a situation where he made you feel a certain way. Yeah. You know, and that, that's the biggest thing of being able to let go and this not being your story anymore is being able to forgive those who hurt you. Forgiveness is the biggest key to all healing, mm-hmm. right? Because yeah. it does feel good to hold on to that hot coal of yes. anger. Right. But at the end of the day, you're just hurting yourself. Right. The other person can literally walk away from you. Because, and also too, like, you, you don't know that, yeah, this, this situation affected you so deeply, but sometimes the other person is not even aware at how much it oh, yeah. affected you. Yeah. Right? I remember I had a conversation with my dad a few months ago, and... I was just like we were having a conversation about his behavior in the past Mm -hmm. and he was like yeah you know like I was a bad guy and I hope you don't uh, you don't ever have to deal with that in your life now and I'm like well dad you know like (laughs) you showed me that relationship pattern (laughs) like that's how it works yeah and he's like no no don't choose guys like me I'm like (laughs) thanks thanks (laughs) Thanks for telling me that I'm in my 30s. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Oh my God, that's so funny. But you know, it's also too, another thing, because I had a conversation with my dad, because 
I always felt like my dad was always picking on me as a kid because mm-hmm. like they micromanaged my life because yeah. I was just I didn't take life seriously I didn't I didn't take school seriously I didn't take my life seriously I was just like you know I'm just kind of going with the flow and mm-hmm. wherever I go wherever I end up I'm gonna be okay I'm yeah. like I'm all right yeah but with him he he wanted my life to be a bit more structured knowing mm-hmm. where I was going like what my plans were and um and I'm like, no, I'm not like, I'm, I'm not like that. Yeah. Right. And so like, I always felt like he never trusted me. Like, I'm like, he doesn't even love me. Like, he's just like constantly like freaking trying to control my life and da 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 yeah. And so that's when, how they were showing me. Right. Life. But then that's the thing, right? Yeah. I had this conversation with him and he's like, I only did it because I love you. Mm-hmm. You know, I wanted you to be like, I wanted you to have your life set so I don't yeah. have to worry about you. I did it out of love and this and yeah. that. And it's just like, man, and here I thought like this man, like hated us. hated me i know <laughs> you know it was but same. like it's like your perception yeah. is so skewed as a child as a child but see like that's the thing it's like if we would have had this conversation like 15 years ago you know i probably wouldn't but you didn't know how to communicate what you your issue was and we were also living in fear yeah, right as children right yeah and also too like scared of maybe what the answer might be right like what if it's like yeah like don't like i don't like you (laughs) it's like oh fuck well that's what we assume (laughs) right Right? i I had the same same conversation with my dad a couple years ago though and i was i was like you know like you never showed me love you weren't affectionate Mm -hmm. like you were never home and he's like yeah because i was working Mm -hmm. like i was working to pay for the roof over your head (laughs) <laughs> and put food on the table for you yeah but as a kid you're like what is money like who needs money yeah <laughs> right like that's not a love language to a child mm-hmm. so yeah yeah but it's it's these things like we have to realize i think that our fathers were lit- again trying their best mm-hmm. they did love us and yeah. they thought that by leaving by being workaholics by doing these things that they were either teaching us something or showing their love for us. Yeah. And that's where the forgiveness yeah. really comes in. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Forgiving them as a human being. Mm-hmm. And then now, having now forgiven or going through that with your father, now what you're going to do with your stories now is go back to, the, to those moments and be that person that you think your inner child mm. needed in that moment. Like, yourself. what did they... Yeah, this one's gonna... This one brought so many tears, like, <laughs> broke me one. down. Um, is talk to that child. Mm-hmm. Talk to that little you. What did you need to hear in those moments? Whether it be something as simple as, like, you know, I love you. You're loved. What's happening to you right now, you know, just understand that, like, you can't take it personal. Your mm-hmm. dad is doing the best that they can. Like, you are loved. You, yeah. You know, and anything else that you feel you needed to hear in that moment. Like, one other, like one good thing that I do, too, is, like, sometimes it's hard to picture yourself as a child, is go grab a picture of yourself as a kid mm-hmm. and picture those and imagine those scenarios yeah. and talk to that little you. And what did that little you need in that moment to feel yeah. safe, to feel heard, to feel... Um, Loved. Loved, you know. Yeah, I've, I've read quite a bit on this. And you want to picture yourself between three and four years old, mm-hmm. the inner child, because he or she still lives in you. You just mm-hmm. most likely push them down yeah. because they, they were too needy. They needed too much love. Um, so it's bringing them back up and literally, like, you can see that child in front of you. You can hold them, hug them, kiss them. Like, mm-hmm. it's a process, an ongoing process of talking to this child that has been locked in the closet for years Mm -hmm. um, and raising yourself again. Like be that father, be that mother that maybe you didn't have. Mm -hmm. Um, Provide that structure, that that love, like that presence that you didn't receive Mm -hmm. as a child that you felt that maybe you had to live up to. Mm -hmm. Right? And I think... Yeah. Yeah, and and that can manifest both ways. Like either if you're in the masculine energy predominantly... Maybe you're re-embodying those issues again mm-hmm. as a man. Mm-hmm. If you're the feminine, then it's like one being attracted to it, but one or putting up that masculine wall, mm-hmm. right? That masculine, like I can do anything myself. Mm-hmm. I don't need to surrender to a man. Mm-hmm. Like taking that down because the more you forgive, the more that wall will come down. Right, and you'll start seeing things from 
instead of a wounded lens mm-hmm. from a lens of love and understanding yeah. and compassion and the fear will just yeah. disappear yeah <laughs> right and also to remember like the, these moments that you experienced as a child were truly defining because they dictate these moments dictate mm-hmm. how you will live the rest of your life yeah you know and just do it now do yeah. the healing now like i know it's yeah. scary when we were do i remember we were si- we'd sit there on the couch and we would do lists of things that we need to forgive our dads for mm-hmm. and i i did my list i'm like i don't want to do it. i don't want to forget like literally yeah i would put it off for weeks looking at this list because i just didn't want to give forgiveness to this person <laughs> yeah and it's just hurting <laughs> i'm stubborn yeah <laughs> but it's just hurting that it's hurting you yeah because my dad had no clue mm-hmm. other than the fact that like i would give him the cold shoulder or like the stink eye every time mm-hmm. i saw him but <laughs> my dad would really pay for lunch and i'd be like thanks <laughs> Oh so passive aggressive yeah. yeah but see hey but <laughs> but now yeah you see them as a human being you can like literally taking this baggage off mm-hmm. and you also start seeing them as like you start seeing their inner child mm-hmm. and all you want to do is just hug that part of them yeah like that hurt the poor little boy, boy. yeah that yeah. didn't have the love that didn't have like a place to feel safe like you start seeing that in people yeah and like it just you grow a new understanding let's brothers yeah let's remember too our dads grew up in a time where boys were not allowed to cry Mm -hmm. right that like you don't cry don't be a wuss yeah like can you imagine like that's how you raise a psychopath (laughs) i just to put it lightly (laughs) to put it lightly (laughs) like i'm raising a little boy and i can't even like he's just so like sweet and kind Mm -hmm. and i can't even imagine saying that to him Mm -hmm. But you know what? It's also too, like, it wasn't just them being raised by a father that way. Their mothers were the same way. Right. You know, because that was the culture. It was... Oh, my God. Like, you just want to... Oh, my God. Like, you you want to raise a psychopath who has no emotion, Mm -hmm. just goes to work and comes home and is just... Okay, yeah, you want him to be your rock. But, like, a divine masculine can be your rock and express his emotion. Mm -hmm. And be loving right (laughs) right yeah exactly just such a skewed way of seeing life back then anyway we're changing it now yeah and it starts with forgiveness yes starts with loving this other person yes and recognizing that like like it or not you have them within you yes (laughs) they are you (laughs) (laughs) okay so on to the next step yeah is and i guess this is like probably the final step is like now that we have made the list of what is a divine masculine, what is a div- uh, bleh, and what is a wounded masculine. Yeah. I want you to ask yourself the question: How do you embody the divine masculine energy within you? Mm. So, questions to ask yourself is: Are you being present? Mm. Like when you are cre- like doing a task, are you present in that moment, yeah. or is your mind constantly wandering? Okay. Are you stuck in that head? Are you stuck in that head? Another question. Are you making clear decisions for your life? And are these healthy decisions? Um, Like, are you running from love? Well, I think one, like, are you running from love? Or, like, have you created a wall around mm -hmm. yourself? And I think, maybe I'm digressing here. Mm -hmm. But, like, I think when we create that wall around ourselves, what that really is was, like, lack of a strong father figure. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, we created our own protection wall. Mm -hmm. Right? So, like, addressing that wall and start learning to see it Mm -hmm. is one of the steps. Yes. And then, are you bringing a healthy structure to your life? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you making decisions to have a healthy life? Like, are you putting yourself first? Are yeah. you surrounding yourself with positive people? Are like, are, are you, you doing self care? Are like, you removing those addictions slowly? Right. Are you working on your growth, or are you just suppressing it with addictions? Are you, mm-hmm. you know, like what work are you doing for yourself to better yourself? Yeah. Are you running away from your mm-hmm. your issues, your emotions, your whatever? Like they're not going to disappear, mm-hmm. buddy. Yeah. <laughs> they're gonna be stuck to you and that wall is gonna stay up unless you take it down brick by brick right another major one is how are you supporting your feminine energy within you Mm. 
Yeah. Are so you divine shaking? masculine can yeah. support the feminine. Like even like if you're even if you're a woman and you're predominantly masculine energy, like are you listening to your heart? Are you letting yourself feel if you are hurt? Yeah. Are you accepting and acknowledging what you're feeling and yeah. not just trying to suppress it and or trying to keep yourself busy to avoid feeling? Mhm. Because we're we're human. Yeah. Like you were not meant to be this cold yeah thing that just works and build like you're not a robot yeah as much as my five-year-old son would like to be you have a heart for a (laughs) reason you have a heart for a reason you're human (laughs) yeah you're divine like you are yes there's the container which Mm -hmm. is a masculine energy but like you were meant to be filled with that love energy Mm -hmm. at your core Mm -hmm. all of us not just the women Mm -hmm. not just the feminine Mm-hmm. And also, too, like, even just looking at, like, the yin and yang symbol, mm-hmm. like, within the yin and the yang, there is the opposite energy, right. you know? So every everything in this world has both energies, mm-hmm. and you have to honor both energies. You do. You know? Or she'll come and rip the rug right out from your feet. <laughs> you know, you're going to traumatize people. <laughs> well, wake up. <laughs> like, I'm trying to let people, All like... All I'm saying... <laughs> Is do it before yeah. God's source, goddess, comes mm-hmm. in and does it for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right? Because it's easier when you can dictate your steps and mm-hmm. like, or get it ripped out. Well, either way, yeah. it's going to be a painful process. But I think we like to feel like we're somewhat in control of it. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well. With that, on that note, thank you for watching. Yes. And if you want to learn more about father wounds, healing those daddy issues, mummy issues, all that good stuff, as well as building a sacred business, please join our waiting list for our members club where we're going to be inviting in experts every month mm-hmm. that are going to be talking about these big issues. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to have master classes that are going to teach you step by step step in depth mm-hmm. hands on how to heal these things and how to build sacred business and pursue your mission your passion mm-hmm. and that will also include weekly one uh, weekly coaching calls with us and our experts yes. where you can ask us anything yes so if you're interested in that when we open doors please join our waiting list the link is somewhere over here probably oh, yeah, down there. here join that waiting list and we'll send you lots of good stuff on there too lots of great how to heal yourself, Mm -hmm. notes and posts and videos. So thank you so much and, and, and let love be your intention intention always. always. (laughs) Bye. Bye.